All right, let's look at a couple more problems where we can use the square root property. So I guess I've kind of let the cat out of the bag so you know how to solve each of these equations. But let's talk about why we're going to use the square root property. What are the things we're looking for? And that's key to all of these quadratic equations. It's not you do the same thing for every equation. There's going to be a procedure that we're going to be talking about so that you know what the best method is for each of these. The first thing you always want to look for is the square root property. Can we use that? Now, when there's only one instance of the variable and that's contained inside of a square, that's clue, or that, that, that's the big clue for you to use the square root property. So you have to start peeling away the layers until only x remains. Well, the first big guy to get rid of is this 5. See, the 5 isn't really connected to anything, so we're just going to subtract them on both sides, leaving us with 2x plus 9. Quantity squared is equal to negative 49. All right. Well, I can't do anything with the 2 or the 9 inside the parentheses until I, um, until I address the square up here. And the way that I can address that and undo that, do the inverse operation, is by taking the square root. So I'm going to take the square root of both the left side and the right side of the equation. And remember, it should be ringing in your head, don't forget the plus or minus. That's always going to be there whenever you are the one that is applying the square root. If you have a problem that contains a square root, it's just what you see. But if you are the one who's putting the square root, you are applying, you're changing the problem by putting a square root on both sides, you must have the plus or minus. All right, so now this just gives me 2x plus 9 on the left. On the right side, we have plus or minus. The square root of 49 is 7, and the negative inside leads to the imaginary unit i. All right, now we just have to get uh, we just have to get uh, x by itself. So the first thing here is to don't divide by 2, but subtract 9 on both sides, just like this. Now you'll notice that the 9 and the 7i are not like terms, and they do not combine. So we leave this as negative 9 plus or minus 7i. All right, one more step until we have x completely by itself, and that's to divide both sides of the equation by 2. All right, so x is equal to negative 9 plus or minus 7i, all divided by 2. It's, granted, not the prettiest of answers, but it is the solution. Now, you could try to separate this into one plus and one minus answer, but if I do this, if I look at negative 9 plus 7i, could I combine those guys on a normal day? No. And so since you can't, it's safe to leave it just like this. Please notice that I didn't do anything crazy in the process of solving for x. You know, I moved the 5 to the other side. I have to use the square root property to undo the square. Subtract the 9, divide by 2. It's all about those inverse operations and getting x completely by itself. All right, one more guy. Let's look at solving 7 minus 2 times the quantity of 4x plus 5 squared equals negative 11. Be careful. 7 and 2 cannot subtract because the 2 is connected by multiplication to that set of parentheses, to that group. So, I want you to think about this. If you had an equation that was 7 minus 2u equals negative 11. If that were your equation and you had to solve that for u, what would you do first? Would you do 7 minus 2? And you know that you wouldn't do that because they're not like terms, right? Just like you're not going to do 7 minus 2 here. So we have to get this u by itself in much the same way you want to get that square by itself because once the square is by itself, then we can use the square root property. So first things first, we need to subtract the 7. 
subtract that on both sides. We have negative 2 times the quantity 4x plus 5 squared equals negative 18. All right. It's not time yet for the square root property because I still have this coefficient of negative 2 in front. So I have to undo that by dividing both sides by negative 2. All right. So now these guys are going to reduce. I have the quantity of 4x plus 5 squared is equal to, this becomes positive 9. And now that I've got the square by itself, I can use the square root property. So let's take the square root of both sides. Don't forget the plus or minus. All right, so I take the square root of the square. This becomes 4x plus 5 on the left is equal to plus or minus, and the square root of 9 is just 3. It's not the square root of 3. It's not 3i. The square root of 9 equals 3. All right, so let's finish this. Let's get x by itself by first subtracting 5 on both sides. And as I mentioned before, when you already have a plus or minus going on on the right side, anything you move over should really go in front of that to avoid confusion. So negative 5 plus or minus 3. By writing it this way, it's very clear that the plus or minus is connected to the 3 and has no effect on the negative 5 whatsoever. Finally, we divide both sides by 4. So x equals negative 5 plus or minus 3, all divided by 4. Well, there's something extra that we have to take care of. Notice that if I didn't have that minus part and I just had negative 5 plus 3, I could combine those. So when that becomes the situation, you're going to have to take your answer and separate it to get your two separate answers and then simplify those guys. So let's do that. So x equals negative 5 plus 3 divided by 4. This is going to be one of your answers. So this becomes negative 2 over 4, which means x equals negative one half. And then you have the other situation, the other half of this, which says x is equal to negative five minus three divided by four. All right, so that's negative eight over four, so x equals negative two. So even though we use the square root property and we have plus or minus, the fact that we didn't have anything imaginary or radical meant that we had to finish the problem by separating it into the two different answers. Okay, One of them with a plus and one of them with a minus and we simplify, we get negative one half and we get negative two. 